Hey students, welcome to uh, the newest resource. Uh, this will be a weekly resource that is for you. It's gonna line up with our Sunday sermon series and that goes across each campus. Uh, so we're excited to, to do this together, to talk through God's word and then to apply it. I'm Chris Blanton, I'm at our Station Hill campus and wanna welcome you to this, our first episode uh, of this resource. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about the idea of challenges and difficulties. Uh, so Sunday morning, you will hear your campus pastor preach on this, and then you can come back to this resource. You're going to uh, hear, hear from a, a student minister from one of our campuses uh, in, a, in a welcome time, but then in a teaching time, and then we'll wrap it up uh, and help apply uh, this to your life. So uh, as we do that, we're going to talk about difficulties and difficult situations, challenges in life. So I want to ask you and think about this for a moment. What has been one of the most difficult decisions or biggest challenges you have faced? I think back to my life and uh, I can remember being in high school and walking into my senior year of high school. Uh, I had my class ring, it had my basketball number on it from playing basketball, and I had this choice to make walking into my senior year of if I was gonna try out for the basketball team or not. Uh, the backside of that story is I had been cut from the team my 11th grade year and I had full plans to, to be all in for my senior year. Uh, but what happened that summer was God had been doing a work in my life, had called me to full-time uh, ministry, and so I had a choice to make of deciding, am I gonna pursue basketball and give a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of effort to basketball, or am I gonna take that time and use it elsewhere? Uh, and that was just a really difficult and pressing decision I can remember having to make. Uh, Garrett's gonna take us now and walk us through 2 Timothy, and so here's Garrett. I remember the days of cross country at Woodland. I was, there's about nine kids on the team. I think I was the ninth best on the team. Therefore, you're probably the worst. I was the worst. What would happen is every day at practice, we would run Crockett Park. If you know anything about Woodland Middle School, it's right next to this great park called Crockett. And we would run the trails of that park. Well, at the end of practice, and even sometimes at the beginning, our coach would put us in single file line and we would run around the soccer field as a team single file all the way around. The last person in the line, as the team is running in circles, has to sprint as fast as humanly possible to the front. Uh, once that person gets to the front, then the person in the very back sprints again, and then it continues. So literally, probably every 15, 20, maybe 30 seconds, you are sprinting as hard as you can, and then running the rest of the time. I hated that stuff. I hated the practice, but here's what I learned. Once our team, and we won the whole thing that year, uh, Woodland 96, I'm old, but we won the whole thing that year, and here's what I found. Our coach would make practice the hardest thing that we did to improve our training, to improve our endurance, so that when we showed up at a meet on Thursdays and ran a mile and a half, our team was ready to get the reward that we had trained for. This is Paul's word to, th to Timothy. He knows he's in Ephesus. Ephesus, just so you know, not a good spot uh, in so many ways. They are not truly receptive to this book, to the gospel. Paul is encouraging Timothy that no matter what happens, keep training and use the right method to train. Use the right book. He points Timothy back to the text and says, this text will train you, it will build endurance so that you will receive the reward at the end of the day, or like us in cross country, Thursdays at seven when the meet happens, okay? Here's what it says, this text, let me read it for you. Um, Paul instructs in 2 Timothy 3, uh, just a quick overview. Uh, he says that in the last days, bad things are gonna happen, but he gets to verse 10, I'm gonna read you 10 through 17. You, however, have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, and my steadfastness. Get this, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, which persecutions, he says, I endured. Yet from them all the Lord rescued me. Now that's big. Verse 12, indeed all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus is a promise, will be persecuted. Now, that's not a promise that you like or I like, but it's the truth. It's in the text, so we got to believe it, right? It says that you will be persecuted, while evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse. 14, but as for you, continue in what you've learned and have firmly believed. Now, last but not least, if you scroll down just a little bit farther, okay, you're going to get to verse 16. 
says this, all scripture, and you know it, is breathed out by God, profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So Paul says to Timothy, in a place where it's not easy to get the gospel out, endure. Um, do everything you can to stick close to the gospel. How do you do that? He says that you must understand and truly believe that all scripture is actually breathed out, created, made by God. My question is, do you believe that? Do, you, do I believe that? If I truly believe that this text, this book, was given to us by God for how to live now, I think I'd read it and read it a ton. I would dig, I would equip, I would endure and train myself with this word. Let this word be the first thing that we run to. My question to you, based on this text, is if we're called to endure as believers and get the gospel out, have these conversations in a time when opposition seems pretty high, how are you training? How am I training? What needs to be cut out so that this text, this book, this God-breathed book can be placed in? Maybe it's a TV show that's got to go. Maybe Fortnite's got to go from 30 minutes to 15 minutes. I, I don't know what it is for you. And I'm not harping on video games. I'm really not. Maybe it's a sport that's got to be trimmed back a little bit to make room for this so that when you learn this, then you infuse it into that sport. All scripture is breathed out by God, profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, and for training in righteousness. This book is your key to truly endure. And Paul says to Timothy, you can do this, but only through the power of Jesus. We've got to tap into that power. Let's get in the word, let's read the text, and have a great week getting the gospel out together. Students, we can endure. How do we do it? This right here. Let me pray for us. Father, we love you. We give you this time. We give you this moment. Spirit, by your power, would you show us what's got to be kind of carved out of our lives so that we can make you the very center of everything that we do? It's not that video games are bad. It's not that sports are bad. It's not that any of that stuff is bad. It's how do we get you in the center of our lives so that you infuse sports, you infuse our video game playing, you infuse our conversations and outings with our best friends. Um, you don't want to be one of the things on our list, you want to be the whole list. So help us get you at the center so that we can truly endure in these moments. We'll give you all the glory and uh, Father we thank you for your son Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. Hey students, I'm Dave. I'm over at the West Franklin campus and I just want to give you the top three takeaways that I heard from Garrett's talk. Uh, the first thing I heard him say, he won a cross country title in 1996. He's old. That's all you can take away from that one, right? Second thing I heard, top three takeaways. Hey, Paul tells Timothy that the Bible will train him to receive the reward. I don't know about you, but I want a reward. I want to receive the reward from God, and the Bible is the key to that. And then I think the best thing that you can take away from what Garrett said is this, that if we believe that all scripture is from God, it will help us endure and train the ways that are needed to become a disciple that makes disciples. That's what we're called to do, and the Bible is the key to that. So you may have more questions. You may want to talk about this with some more people. You may be like, this is new to me or this is so rich. Let me explore it some more. So let me give you some ways to do that. Hey, talk with your family. Uh, if they're believers, talk to them about what does this mean to train and endure and be in the Word. Talk with uh, your friends who are followers. Uh, be willing to talk with your friends who aren't followers about this. They may have some questions about this too. Hey, if you have a group leader or a student minister, reach out to them. And then I'll encourage you, check social media. Some of our campuses are going to put, be putting out resources throughout the week that tie in with this theme. So we want to encourage you to really dig into this because it's valuable and it will help you receive the, re the reward that God has for you. So thanks for being with us today. We'll be back with you next Sunday. We can't wait.